Another podcast listener. This is What Scares Us, a podcast where four friends share the movies that freak us out and make us hop a high-speed train to go see our mommies. Brought to you by the Ann Arbor District Library. I'm Allison. Hey, I'm Amanda. I'm Christopher. And I'm Matt. Today's movie is Train to Busan, which is one of my favorites. I am super into all kinds of South Korean media, so this is a um, big one for me. Um, and Train to Busan is the director Song Ho Yeon's first live action film. He had only done animated stuff in shorts before this. Have you guys seen this before? What were your first impressions? I've seen this movie just twice and I loved it. It Yay. was so much fun. My only other prior experience was from watching MASH because they're <laughs> they're always going on R and R in Pusan. Oh. But of course the movie's not called Train to Pusan, it's Train to Busan. Ah. But there may be some pronunciation mm-hmm. vagaries that mm-hmm. I don't know about. It's probably somewhere between a B and a P. I'm not sure. Sh- yeah, right. the, the letters B up. And so depending on if it's at the beginning or end, it like changes if it's closer to B or P. Okay. But then also they redid romanization in the 2000s. Right. Anyway. So I thought that was interesting. So I had that, that old Alan Alda connection. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I've heard the city name since um, I had not seen this movie prior to this podcast. I had heard of it. It popped up on Netflix. But I... I have a hard time watching foreign language films for no particular reason because when I actually sit down and do watch ones I've been waiting and waiting to watch, I end up really liking them. I just have, you know, short attention span theater and I like to watch the screen and not read the screen. But yes, I was happy to watch it um, in preparation for this and I really, really loved it. It had so many good things about it. It's a really, really great movie. So I was happy to watch it. But having gotten or knowing the movie existed and being ready to watch it for the show, the city name has popped up in a couple different places where my brain, like, hey, it recognized it and, like, you know, made note of it because I've had it on the brain the past couple months um, thinking about doing this episode. But, yeah, great great movie. Happy to watch it. I had not seen this movie before. I've heard all kinds of great things about it, and in my looking it up after you mentioned it, saw that it is a pretty well-loved movie. Mm-hmm. Weirdly enough, my, my experience with it, though... Uh, so I watched it on Peacock because that was at, at my un- impression was that was the only streaming service that I had that had it on there. And unfortunately, that copy only had the dubbed English no! version. So I watched that. <laughs> and the other thing was that I had the subtitles on and the subtitles were clearly for the Korean version. So <laughs> Wait, you watched that that way this recently? Yeah, I oh, had an extremely no. <laughs> strange experience watching this movie. And let me tell you, uh, no disrespect to the English voice actors, but yikes. <laughs> it, I think that like so let me let me back up and say I did end up watching it again a couple of days ago on Netflix where it is not English dubbed. Made me like the movie a whole hell of a lot more because <laughs> the English voiced version of it is like tonally fucking terrible it's like it's it's embarrassing (laughs) and it made me mad it made me initially not like this movie very much yeah that's too bad because it is really great to watch for the first time yeah i've never heard a good dub nope i don't know that they exist um i watch a bunch of like murder mystery shows on various streaming services i watch them and i instantly forget them but a lot of those are like dubbed yep (laughs) um but they're not meant to be pretty yeah this one was pretty So um, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty details here, but please, if you've not seen Train to Busan before, go watch it with subtitles, not the dubbed version, and then (laughs) come back and join us. So right at the beginning of the movie, we learn that there's been a minor leak in the biotech district and watch as a deer springs back to life after being hit by a car. We meet Sokwu, who's a work-obsessed and inattentive father. We learn that he missed his daughter's recital, and he gives her a birthday gift that he already gave her on the last Children's Day. And his daughter, Suan, says that she wants to go see her mom in Busan for her birthday, so she and her dad leave to take the train. Right off the bat, I know this is going to be a great movie because of all the characters in it. This is why I think Jaws is so good. This is why I think Alien is so good. we got to get a little Alien reference into this episode. (laughs) Sure. But it's it's always the characters, and if they're well 
thought out and well delivered, it makes a horror movie everything to me. Mm-hmm. And that's all that's all we've got in this movie are these great characters. And it's a horror, so you know great things are going to happen, too. Mm-hmm. Well, I think, too, getting at the beginning, we get introduced to so many characters. And as the movie goes by, you start to learn more about their personalities and the role that they play throughout the film in various forms of protection, denial, not protection, the weak, the strong, who's going to fight. And after I watched the movie the first time, as soon as it was, it was over, I was, again, I was, I was crying at the end. But <laughs> it, after watching the whole film, then I went back and I watched like the first, what was like 15, 20 minutes, just so I could see those to learn. I knew who the main characters were and how they ended. And I wanted to go back to the beginning to be reintroduced to them just to kind of feel like I could know them a little bit more. But yeah, the characters were just really, really good. And it just it added that element of heart to this horror it gives you a lot of different people to like and a lot of mm-hmm. people to pay attention to. There's There are all kinds of tonal differences between all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, my biggest takeaway for this first section is just like, God, this dad sucks. Yeah. Like, he just is a bad <laughs> dad. And like, asking someone else what kids like mm-hmm. when you're a dad and your kid's not like, she's young, but you're not that young. Yeah. So, and I, I get that that's the point. Um, but yeah. yeah, it made me really hate him right at the beginning. Yeah. Really, I didn't hate him so much as feel sorry for him a little bit because he's not like a bad guy. He's just really inattentive, overly consumed with work, you know. Mm-hmm. So I I felt some sympathy towards him. You know, of course, I felt a lot of sympathy towards the kid, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But so I thought this was an interesting character, neither black nor white for me, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. I can't help but wonder, though, if some of my read of that was the English voice actor. (laughs) (laughs) Just because he, like, kind of was like a, not surfer dude, but like, but like an aloof, like, really animated guy. (laughs) Kind of talks like this. That's how the dad talks. And that's what I know. That's what I saw in my second viewing. And I went, oh, maybe he's not. But I already knew how everything shook out. So... I'm serious. It's almost worth watching just so you can see how dumb of an experience I had watching this initially. Well, I'm honestly glad I didn't know. Well, I don't have was it Paramount or Peacock. Peacock, I don't, yeah. I don't have that platform anyway. A lot of people But don't. knowing my aversion to reading <laughs> subtitles in a non-English film, I probably would have wanted that and it would have been really bad. And you would have been like, man, this movie sucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. It's too Surprise, pretty. Surprise, another banger from me. That's <laughs> no. <pretty. laughs> But I do think with the dad seeing that intro of learning him, his daughter, the relationship between him and his daughter, it kind of sets you up for like the arc of the film and him and how he grows. And there's a comment some later in the film where somebody says, when she's older, she'll understand why you did what you did of him working so hard and being gone. And then once we get to the end, it's it kind of sets up this like redemptive quality of him. He, he learns a lot in a day before, you know, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. That's something I was thinking about is, like, the train ride's only, like, two hours or something. So this whole movie probably takes place in, like, what, four tops? Like, that's crazy. That's, that's a lot of, like, story arc in Yeah, something like that. Cause yeah. Just thinking about what the daylight situation was. It's all daylight. Yeah. Also, it's the little girl's birthday. Yeah. The whole thing is her Yikes. birthday. Yikes. <laughs> Um, the guy that plays the dad is, like, a super popular, huge movie star in South Korea. He's, like, 20 years ago, Brad Pitt. Yeah, he's, yep. He's in um, Squid Game, the first season of Squid Game for, like, a second. Which the people, real move, the real show? Not the, this. The actual show, not the not reality this show. dumb reality show. Yeah. <sighs> he's also in a TV show on Netflix called The Silent Sea, which I liked. Anyway. We are introduced to everybody on the train, and the zombie apocalypse begins. A woman sneaks on board, and she starts attacking people. The train drives by another station, and the passengers watch as the people outside are eaten. And our main characters barricade themselves in one particular cabin in the train. I think it starts awesome. You don't really know where it's going when that woman gets on board, and I... There was another man, I think they called him the homeless man, or they called him Mr. I was thinking he was involved in something. I was like, oh, God, he's a zombie. What's going to happen? And then when that woman gets on, she sneaks on, and then it begins. I also really, really love the way the zombies transform and mm-hmm. how their bodies manipulate. And how, so freaky. Yeah. How fast they move and how creepy. It's so good. <laughs> and everybody has kind of a different time rate of, like, 
transforming. Some are kind of fast. Some take a moment, which I don't, especially at the end, I don't understand that. But um, <laughs> very cool. And uh, this is, we haven't done Never. very many zombie movies for this. I know we did. There were some in Night of the Creeps, but I don't even call those zombies. Those mm. frat boys, right? Some in the, the beyond. Some in the, the beyond. beyond yeah. At the end, but I but would this never. This is like full on. This is like a. This would be described as like a zombie yeah. movie. And I also don't like zombie movies. I don't want to walk watch an apocalyptic thriller. I don't want to watch zombie movies. And here we are. And I'm like, look at those zombies. <laughs> it kind of felt like I was watching a video game. The way they moved and the way mm. they were constantly on the train and they were always trying to move to another train once the other they had to protect themselves. They were kept barricading themselves in different train cars. I felt like I was moving through different levels of a video game. And then also physically how how they were moving, the zombies as well as the people like physically moving, it just I felt like I was watching a video game at times, mm-hmm. and, and not in a bad way. There is a zombie. There's a Resident Evil game that takes place entirely on a train. Mm. Oh, really? Yep. Did it come after this? I don't think so, because this was what 2016. Something. Like um, that. I think Resident Evil Zero is early 2000s, 2002. <clears throat> don't we see the skateboarders here and the people falling out of a plane? It's right around here somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Does the yeah. girl see it from outside the window? I, th- oh. I think it's on TV. I think I know. Oh, that does happen. About. That's on a TV screen. Oh. A news a news reel they're watching later, like in a parking lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Parking lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. That always makes me laugh a little bit. <laughs> it made like, me plop, laugh. Plop, plop, plop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the skateboarders are just there. Right. <laughs> 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 well, then that one guy... Um, the homeless dude, Mister, he's in the bathroom, huddled down. He goes, "They're all dead." I feel like this is also where some of the like social commentary comes in, where like two people just got on the plane, a guy or a lady who's like turning into a zombie. At, nobody cares about her, but then this one guy who's like houseless comes on. And they're right. all like very they're like, concerned. We gotta get him. him. We gotta get you out of here. We can't yeah. go anywhere until you're gone. Well, and I made that assumption too, not because of he was unhoused, but just because he seemed a little creepy and bizarre and he was mumbling to himself. And I'm like, <laughs> is he a zombie? Because I didn't know what they looked like or how they behaved at that point. Mm-hmm. And right. he was just hiding and he was saying, they're all dead. I love how that businessman is like, oh, um, oh if you don't study, you'll end up like him. And then Suan's like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. Like, mom says you're a bad person if you say that. The businessman, <laughs> ooh, he was just a piece of work. Our whole overall movie. bad guy, I would say. Yeah, bad yeah. dude. So I was wondering if you think the businessman is kind of like a reflection on the dad, how the dad could end up, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah, totally. You know? It's like if he keeps going down this road of working, you know, too many events during the summer, things <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's like he's going to end up like that old, crotchety old businessman. <laughs> well, he was also not just business savvy. He was so selfish. Yeah. 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 Yep. So selfish. Really quick to find a way to make it about him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, classic, I need to get here. I classic need to dude this. stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you're right, though. And I think that's reflected in, like when the dad slams the door on the other couple and doesn't let them in, like it's because the businessman tells him to shut the door. Right. They start listening to him at some at different points in the movie. They start to listen to him. Mm-hmm. And the dad tells Suan, like, just worry about yourself. Mm-hmm. And at some way the little girl says that or something like, you only think about yourself. And that's why mom left you. Yeah. Burn. You gotcha. Oh my God. <laughs> Zap. Suan, go off. That was awesome. The, the, the dad is on a learning lesson. <laughs> Suan takes no shit and I love her for it. Oh, I love that little girl. I also love when all of the people are turning on the train. The first lady, she like piggybacks on the back of the like train attendant and the lady's just like walking down as this lady's on top of her like <laughs> eating her it cracks me up it's so funny some of the movements and like behaviors of the, of the zombies are not scary to me they're funny because they're so frantic yeah mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't make me like it any less or anything it's just like it they're they're very frantic in their movements mm-hmm. and very like and the sound design like the sounds that they make and everything like they're they're hyper like violent and over the top Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. like their motions are kind of like jittery yeah Mm -hmm. jittery and jerky it's kind of like you're in fast forward yeah did they ever say exactly what it is that afflicted all of them i can't remember exactly just the leak in the biotech 
Just chemicals. But it wasn't it, Ah, just jet chemicals. Yeah. <laughs> same same That's fine. vibe as the host, where it's like, well, yeah. we were dumping some stuff. Whoops. Our bad. <laughs> it wasn't the right stuff to dump. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also meet the other couple, and I just, I especially love the guy. Oh, he's my favorite What's character. His name? Ma Dong Sok. But in American films, he goes as... Don Lee. Don Lee. Right, and I know him from a bunch of stuff. Did you I see call him Eternals? Blue Coat Husband? <laughs> <laughs> Blue Coat. <laughs> uh, no, I did not see Eternals. I didn't oh. hear it was great. But no, I didn't see it either for the same reason, but That's... he's in it, which I think is cool. That is cool. Great. South Korea is in a state of emergency, and the government is shutting down several districts in an attempt to stop the spread. And the train stops at the empty Daejeon station, where the military has supposedly been deployed to help them. Uh, mm-hmm. Sokwu devises an alternate route out to the station so that he and Suwon aren't put into quarantine. But everybody rushes back to the train when they realize that the military has been overrun and they are all zombies, too. This is one of my favorite um, segments in the movie is when they get there, realizing all of the military are zombies on and the then, escalator? Mm-hmm, yeah. the escalator, yeah. and then watching some of the characters trying to escape, and there's a, they form a little alliances, and they are working together. I thought that escalator scene was so cool. Yeah. It's like you're going down, down, the, you know, the, the motor's just taking you down, <laughs> and then you get to the bottom, and it's like, oh, crap. There I, they all are. What are they doing? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think this is also where you get that one, like when when you see a bunch of the um, the military men like jumping off the buildings Ooh, and stuff yeah. like that. You get the one guy that clearly is like a contortionist or something in real life whose arm is like behind his yes. head, I charging did that at once him accidentally. On per- oh, <laughs> hypermobility. Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> is that what you said arm. when you did it too? Whoopsie. <laughs> I was oh. asleep. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, so you don't know. I you woke up have. and reset it, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Doesn't Grandma die on the phone here? Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Yep. All she wanted was for her son to get back together with his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Sad. Well, rip to this family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, too, in this part, the dad and the daughter are running off trying to find their own path. Like, they're, they're not on the escalator. Mm-hmm. I also love the the path of the baseball team and watching the, the one kid, the one guy, and the one girl kind of break from them. But watching this baseball team is kind of cool. The girl is um, like a K-pop star. Mm-hmm. She's in oh, the really? Wonder Girls. Yeah, which is oh. like the second. I generation. liked her. I liked having another female on board. And she was just kind of see. She's like, well, I told you you like me. And you said, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then she ends up like hanging out. And then like at the end, like when they like die together, it was just like, oh, it's so it's sweet. Just, it's really lovely. God, that. Sorry. I just remembered the introduction to to the baseball team and her dynamic mm-hmm. in the English version was the most confusing thing I've ever <laughs> seen. Because they say something to the effect of like, I'm your girlfriend today. What do you think about that? Oh my and God. that's all it was. It, it, I remember being like, this that's weird, but anyway, and that but the subtitles didn't match, so yeah. yeah, yeah. I did like the one moment when you had um, the man with a pregnant wife. They were in a different area, and they had the the glass closed, and then the the dad of the little girl. Um, we already know that him and the, the I don't know their names, so right. the the dad and then the blue coat husband, blue coat husband, <laughs> blue coat husband of the pregnant woman. Um, they already are. Not, they already don't like each other. They already are butting heads, and then. He's about to go in to another area, and then the dad is out there with a little girl, and he says, come on, asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I just thought that was great because you could already tell that they're forming that little tiny alliance of they still want to stay alive. You know, they're still separate from some of the other um, people that are on the train. Yeah. And then he holds the door open enough, and then the asshole dad, like, goes in. So I just really like that moment between them. And the husband saves Suan. Like, Mm-hmm. My favorite part of the whole movie is when it like you just see her about to be eaten, and then he just elbows that guy in the face, just like boom. Yeah, I <laughs> love d- it. He's my favorite. That husband is my favorite because you can just tell he's a fighter. He's got a good heart. He's silly and funny. Um, he's got the baby on the way. I made that. Yeah. <laughs> what he says? I he made says that. I made, I made that. that. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, and you can just tell. And then he ends up like battling and fighting for so many people. And then like when you know he's gonna die later. The whole scene is just like so, oh, like at the moment when you see different people decide to like 
give up themselves to save other people. Yeah. It's just. Wow. <laughs> so, it's so good. Like there's so many heartfelt moments. It was like I was watching a thriller with so much heart, but it's sad, but it, there also just happens to be like this, you know, apocalyptic zombie outbreak happening in the middle of watching this bit of humanity on a train mm -hmm. to go, you mm -hmm. know, just be on a train for an hour. <laughs> that's why I love South South Korean media is because that's like a big, like there's always like a mix of genres. And so even if I wouldn't ordinarily like something, like I've seen a bunch of rom-com like shows, I would never watch that in real life, but they're super heartfelt and there's like something else going on. Like mm -hmm. they're all magical or like it's some like historical thing. I don't know. It's just like very interesting and just like such high quality across the board. I always like a movie when you get this kind of class inversion. So, you know, the people who have more influence and power, like the dad gets on a train with zombies and he's like, uh, I don't know what to do here. I can't fight. I can't do anything. I so can't pay him off. Right. I can't pay him off. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I always love it when the academics get their comeuppance. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's why you work at the library. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I also love when the husband just, like, picks up his pregnant wife and, like, puts her over the side of the escalator. I just find that very oh, funny right. and, like, amazing. I would never be able to do that. One of the reasons I like the film when they were in the station is when the, the military that are zombies come up the escalator. Mm -hmm. The editing is so cool because you've got so many slow motion shots of the zombies, close-ups of the people's faces who are trying to escape it was just really beautiful. I was watching it and I was like, what am I watching right now? Why is it so mesmerizing? <laughs> Especially it, it was for sort of like, like theatrical or like a dance or something. Oh, I it see. was just really good editing. Just really good editing. Very well done. Especially for a first time. I was like, so how impressed. How did you do that? That, that it was a surprising thing to learn is that this was his f first live action feature because it looks really great. Yeah. It looks really, nothing's yeah. choppy. Nothing is out of place. And there's a lot of like slow motion bits or way things are cut to cut together mm -hmm. so. do you remember the kind of mini zombie avalanche where the zombies are all piling up oh. against the plexiglass yes yeah and i <laughs> love that it's just like a human wall and the same thing happens in i think world war z yeah yeah the, yeah. <laughs> the bodies yeah just start stacking up until they overwhelm the wall I hate it. It's so unnatural. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's almost like watching like a pile of um, insects or ants yeah. or something. But there's a few inst instances in this movie where there's a pile of them. Yes. So like, when they're in the station, and you guys mentioned them jumping off the building. So once they're coming out of the station, they all just kind of just start outpouring. It's like you make a hole in something and the water just runs out. Yep. And they've all just like started to run down. Yep. Then they have to get back on the train again, which is also a really cool scene. And when you see them in the train car, like like all packed against the windows mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. The, at least when they can see out. Or there's one scene later when they're on the train where they're walking down the aisle in in mass, and it's just like this, like an avalanche of them. It's just, it's very, it's very cool. I also love that the husband, um, he's like the last one to run and get back on the train, and he grabs that shield or whatever, and he's like fighting them. That is so good. It's cool. Because the, the dad is there, and he can't see what's behind him, and he tells him get on the train, and then you see all the zombies coming at the. He's a badass. Love that dad so much. And later when he takes off his blue coat and he has like his black t-shirt and he starts muscling up and so good. He originally wasn't an actor. He was the main guy's like physical trainer. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's how they know each other. Well, he was really good in this role. Yeah, he was. Um, so half of our protagonists get stuck in a car with zombies and they hide in the bathroom. And then the dad and the husband have to come up with a plan to save them. So they advance through car after car of zombies until they all finally reunite. But on their way to car 15, the other passengers refuse to let them into the car. Um, the husband, sang is bitten and he gives his life to save everybody else. And then finally they make it into the train car, but the other passengers make them move into the next train vestibule because they are afraid that they're bitten. And at the end, um, one of the sisters opens the door and kills them all in retaliation for her sister's death. I'll just end every paragraph going sad. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> well, we had another good team between the, the husband and the baseball kid and the dad. 
barreling, trying to get through all those train cars independently. I feel bad for the baseball kid because he has to like kill all of his friends. <laughs> that was so sad yeah. when he walks in there and then immediately the other two jump in and know he needs a moment. Mm -hmm. It's also convenient that they happen to have a whole like supply of like bats and things. Tape? Yeah. That works out. Yeah. <laughs> like dry, you open up a giant bag of like zippers and tape and like, what is that? <laughs> and they're all just like, they put their jackets around their arms. They were just manning up and instantly they're just like, you're going to be first. I'm last. You're in the middle. Let's go. Team. <laughs> yeah, go team. Let's not, so, let's not die together. Amanda, you already mentioned this, but the husband says to the dad, she'll understand when she's older. And I wasn't sure if I believed the husband. He might have just been saying that to make the dad feel better at the time. I'm not sure. But I thought it was kind of a touching moment. Yeah, yeah, they had a cute little scene in the bathroom, and there's also the scene with the the phone. That was they had the same conversation, wasn't it, with his phone ringer? Mm -hmm. I can't believe that's your phone ringer. He says, "Well, how do I change it?" And then the baseball <laughs> guys just like rolling his eyes right. at these old dudes. Um, but another little sweet moment of these, you know. Yeah. Dads get all the shit and no praise, but it's about sacrifice, right? <laughs> I don't think that's what happens <laughs> in, in life I think the dads get it pretty easy it's always Let's been my understanding dad. <laughs> my dad my dad had it easy. do you think you have it easy <laughs> <laughs> they do for part of the time I don't know that's you know what that, that's generalizing yeah that's true that's true <laughs> I also think it's so cool that the zombies like stop in the dark when they are passing through those tunnels. Mm -hmm. I was like super into The Walking Dead growing up. Like I read all the books. I watched the TV show for far too long. And so it's still like, on, isn't it? There's some version of it that's still on. Oh um, the original show ended, but there's a Daryl Dixon spinoff. Right. Yeah. I never watched any. Again, zombies are not like what I'm gravitating towards watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love them. Um, I can do some apocalypse <laughs> stuff, but I it all don't depends. Know. Sometimes I like them. It, it depends on what their rules are. I like the rules of the zombies in this one. Like the mm -hmm. it's not it's not new necessarily, but it's a new combination mm -hmm. of. That is rules one interesting thing works. about zombies is the rules. I did really like how when they would cover the windows, they would just kind of stop moving and stand there and just kind of drool and kind of twitch. Yeah. And they weren't moving. When they saw a body move, then they would chase. Right. They would just lost, like their instinct took over. But I love that it's like almost like they were blind. It kind of reminded me of the, the crawlers mm -hmm. and the descent, how they were, they couldn't see. So if you, you could be in the same room with them, but they wouldn't see you. Right. They use their ears. But here, again, their, their vision was affected. Yeah. That's actually why I hesitated to pick this one. I made you guys wait was because I was like, are they too similar to the crawlers? Oh, absolutely not. No, no, I think not at all. Enough. Yeah. And those yeah. weren't, well, I guess we could debate what crawlers are. Are they zombies? <laughs> uh, no, they're more like, they're not, they're, they're alive. They're not, yeah, they're, they're not undead. These people are alive. <laughs> yeah. I think. They're not undead. They're not zombies. No, they're just like weird creatures. They're like, they're like a golem. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they've transformed into something like else. Like weird little guppy people. They've gone from bird, <laughs> they went from birds to dinosaurs. <laughs> and back again. Or something. I don't know. What is a zombie? So are you not a fan of Dawn of the Dead or Night of the Living Dead? I've seen some of those. I honestly, I mix them all together. Oh, dear. I, can't <laughs> some of them. You, I will fight y'all. You're not going to change my mind. I've seen some of in Shaun of the Dead. I've seen, I've seen all kinds of weirds. I just, it's not something new I'm going to watch. Huh. And I don't keep track of them. Yeah. Quick poll of the table. Didn't if you we, had to pick a favorite zombie movie, what would it be? Not this one. Not this one. I pass. Pass. <laughs> could I say All right, so far the answers the are not this, pass. <laughs> What's yours, Christopher? <laughs> I mean, Dawn of the Dead comes to mind quickly. It's right near the sure. top. Sure. Because, again, is it even about 28 Days? Yeah. Oh, that's really good. With Sandra Bullock? I, really, I love that one. Days Later. 28 Days Later. Whatever yeah. it's called. See, again, I get yeah. them all confused. But I didn't even know if Dawn of the Dead is about zombies. You know, it's it's all the characters. It's everything else. It's... Who's going to screw who over? Yeah. You know, yeah. what about you? I think I would say 28 Days Later. Oh. I think that I think that one is the first one I saw that was scary. Um, and at the time, it was new because you hadn't seen them run. Mm -hmm. um, now I kind of hate it when they run. 
And yeah. I want it to be like the old style of, of they're walking around and they're dumb. This, so, act, this is kind of so both. It's so curious how that movie, like you had these, this set, set of rules. You're like, wait a minute, what's going on? That's yeah. why it's interesting when you do watch a movie that features zombies to like reimagine like what the rules are. And I feel like that movie did kind of do that where it allowed other rules to people – it let people who wanted to watch those movies like learn there's okay we can have other ways yeah than just you know yeah romero zombies i do I, re- I do also really like the first season of walking dead i didn't watch anything beyond that but i remember really liking it because it was frank darabont wasn't yep. it yeah and then he left <laughs> yeah he did that. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah it was pretty good it was really satisfying and it felt yeah if only stephen king wrote zombie books then i would have seen every movie with zombies and loved it <laughs> So, Allison, do you have a favorite zombie? No, I. It's so funny. I was. I thought of a different movie, and then I realized they're vampires. <laughs> <laughs> That's another <laughs> two two genres I'm not usually. I don't usually go out for. I don't either. I like. I really burned myself out on The Walking Dead, but then, like, basically after you indulge in the walking dead for too long like zombies aren't the scary thing in it it's like always the people it's like negan or the governor Mm -hmm. or like it's always the interpersonal stuff that like gets in the way and is a conflict and so yeah i don't know i'm not i'm not into it at all which is one of the reasons i was so surprised by this movie because i just watched it because i'm like trying to watch every south korean tv show or movie available to me sure Mm-hmm. But this one was definitely talked about when it came on. I remember like seeing it come up on Netflix. I've heard a lot of different filmmakers talk about how much they love this movie, and I- I'd never heard of it until Allison mentioned it to oh, me really? the first time. Yeah, huh? Uh, I I don't have a ten minute tangent this time, but I do have a list of suggestions for other South Korean horror stuff. But I'll save that for the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely an anxiety inducing film. It's very suspenseful. Sure, it's a it's a thriller. Well, I I had Tyra. Well, I don't know if I made her watch or if I was just <laughs> watching it in the living room. Erase her head when she was pregnant. Ooh, wow. What the fuck is wrong with you, yeah. Dad? Like, uh, that's just stupid. <laughs> well, if she ever gets pregnant again, you should make her watch that Who Sarah the Bone Woman movie. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which did not scare me, but halfway through, I literally like shouted into the empty room, "Is someone gonna get this woman some fucking help?" <laughs> <laughs> so in this section, we were just discussing: is this? There's that great scene when they are reunited with some of the other people before they get to the last car, and they have to go through the tunnels when it's dark, but they have to crawl over the luggage racks. Yes, that's yep. another so cool. really great scene. And that's something I've never seen before. So when it happened, I was like, ooh, yeah. like, wow. Yeah, and then the, the old Mr. Dude steps on the pop can. <laughs> and blows oh, it. Oh, man, that sucks so bad. Because mm-hmm. they're like, one, two, <laughs> fuck, dude, you couldn't <laughs> wait 10 seconds? Oh, my God. <sighs> yeah, and then that guy gets bitten, which yeah. sucks so bad. I hate it. Well, he, yeah, it's because him and the dad are trying so hard to keep them and he does he gives up he says i'm tired you go you save my wife and your daughter you go i'm gonna stay here yeah well he's already bitten so yeah. he doesn't i really know have much i know choice. But. and then the um one of the old women also just like shakes her head no and just like seems to just totally be done mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean also like There are so many people on the train, and again, we get just the close-up with a handful of them or, you know, 20 of them or something. But there's so many people on the train who are having their own, they're dealing with this as well. You know, they're trying to contact their family at home. They're trying to decide, am I going to be a hero? Am I going to die? Am I just going to hide in the corner and have everyone else do, you know? Mm -hmm. Any person in a crisis is going to try to figure that out. Yeah, I do think it's interesting because, like, it's like two sides of the same coin where it's like, are they being selfish or is this Mm self-preservation? And you kind of have to make some tough choices to get through it. Right. Um, And also like pack mentality. Well, too, in this one, it happens in such a short time period. Like if you're having a situation that's happening like over, you know, a week or a month or, you know, days, you have more of a chance to acclimate to like the climate and situation that you're in. And, 
dole out those roles. Okay, you're going to be in charge of car 15. I'm in charge of 13. If they come, you know, there's, and with this too, with everybody being so separated, there's a little bit, there is several people who are out for themselves and it's harder for them to kind of, it's such a short time period. You can't, you don't have that. Accepting what's happening to you, how to decide your role in it and then make it happen. Right. And, well, and then when society breaks down or the train breaks down or, you know, whatever, it's like who, some people seem to naturally become in charge, mm -hmm. you know, which is kind of neat, like in Triangle of Sadness. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Or, yeah. 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 Good movie. It's, it's like the, here's this, this breakdown in normal rules. So who's going to be in charge after that, you know? And in this case, the old crotchety business guy seems to be dictating a lot of what happens yeah which is interesting because it's not like he has like better leadership skills but right he's like of a higher status so people yeah. listen to him yeah. he's also the loudest mm -hmm. yes yeah. well and that's part of why he's getting his way too and which is stupid because people don't really want to agree with him like at the end when he's telling them the people to go the only people who are going to survive are the ones he's sending away it's like no you just made that really bad move i didn't i I was sad when he died at the end, but I was also happy. <laughs> yeah, I've got some thoughts on that. But um, I do think it's interesting that when, like, all of our main people are kind of, like, frozen and everybody else on the train is like, like, go up to the vestibule. Like, go, go, get out of here. The homeless guy is the very first person to start moving. Yeah. I find that interesting. Mm hmm um, and I also love the slow motion shot when all of those motherfuckers are getting eaten, like, ten seconds later. Yeah. Yep, yep, yeah, they're trying to... That's when the old lady opens the door. Yeah, yeah right. they segregate right. them. They're like, you go out of your... Also, you can tell they're not infected, but the 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 jerk business dude is just being commanding. Yeah. He has no information, no knowledge. Like, Weird those people know that they're not stuff. infected. If you're infected, you're going to, like... Yeah. yeah. Stupid. South Korea also has more of a, like, collectivist uh culture so there's a lot more like attention paid to like doing things for the greater good which i think is like a huge theme of this movie so i think it's interesting that like all the selfish people either wise up or get eaten <laughs> <laughs> um a father-daughter shared moment on the train is interrupted by a phone call from soku's co-worker who reveals that the outbreak started at ys biotech the passengers transfer trains, but a flaming train careens by and crashes, blocking their way. And the businessman kills the train conductor and the teenagers, and the homeless man sacrifices himself for the others. Was the, the scene between the father and the daughter where she says, I practice that song just for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was really touching and sweet. Yeah. Will you stay with me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I also love how the coworker on the phone is like, we only did what we were told. Is this my fault? Yeah. Like, I feel yeah. like that's such a thing across history. Like, those were the orders. Well, you're mm -hmm. still fucking responsible. Yeah, I wonder how that plays out, too, in a different culture where it seems to be more order bound, you know? I mean, you know, I think in the U.S. we're that way to some extent. It's like, well, just following orders. But I think in other countries it may be even more so where oh. you just kind of, that's what my boss said, so I'm going to do it. But I don't really know. No, I think that's a good point. I think that's interesting. Um, also, damn, this train conductor is really trying his hardest to get everybody. <laughs> he really to is. Sound. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was so sad when he got bit. I was like, oh, come on. Not you. Yeah. And then teen baseball guy and <laughs> Wonder Girl are also gone. Yep. Also because of that asshole. I do love the um, when the train like falls over on them or whatever that's supposed to be. I just think it looks sweet. And having them all like pressed up against the glass above everybody mm -hmm. is like very visually interesting. Yeah. And I do like eventually the zombies are trying to break through the glass. Again, it's like the water falling through an open hole in the yep. glass. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's so good. And you're, you're the tension, you're waiting and waiting for them to like get out before it collapses. <laughs> and then, oh, it's, it's good. 
Um, the final three make a run for the moving train, and Sokwu removes the zombies who are hanging off the back. The businessman emerges from the conductor's spot, but he's been bitten and he's turning into a zombie. Um, they fight, but the dad is bitten in the process, and he jumps off the train as he reminisces about Suan as a baby. <laughs> the cheesiest fucking part of this whole movie. <laughs> you bet. Oh, it, like, it's like the one part that keeps us from being like a really perfect movie for me. <laughs> did I cry through that part? I did. Me too. I always do. Yeah. Last night... 11 p.m. crying. Yeah. He was, we were texting each other. He was just talking. He was just thinking about his baby baby girl's face when she was born. And I'm like, oh. and then to watch him slow motion, like jump off the back of the train. Oh my God. I'm always like, the seat is taking so long. But. <laughs> well, that human zombie chain. Uh, well, I shouldn't call it a human zombie chain. Yeah. The zombie chain. Right. So good. Oh. See, I had never seen that before, but it's still just playing on this kind of zombie avalanche theme. Yeah. yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Well, and I love, too, how it's like they could have, like, stopped the train. <laughs> There's so many of them that are just hanging on, yes. and the dad's trying to, like, kick them off. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're just climbing over each other. <laughs> yeah. It's like they have no respect for each other. They just want to go and get those those uh, four humans. Yeah. These zombies, they got no respect. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you. <ya. laughs> And there's so many of them. Yeah, That's yes. like so freaky. Do you ever wonder what real life would be like if there was a zombie outbreak in Ann Arbor? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, we so many of us would we would we would oh, all I die. Know. But like, don't we'd you all think be you, trying to be polite. Am I <laughs> the only one that thinks about it regularly? Well, I <laughs> like, do. Where would you go? Mm -hmm. Like, how would you eat? You know. I think about this all the time, and especially yeah. because we lose power all the time. Like, <laughs> I'm like five steps away from being Nick Offerman in The Last of Us. Well, apparently we're going to Allison's house when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do really like, like, I hate the businessman the entire time, like, with a passion. But at the end, this actor is amazing because instantly I have so much empathy for this man because he's just, like, scared and he wants his mom. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, that feels realistic even though it sucks well too with this scene where he you've got the the pregnant mom the little girl and then the dad on the train and then the businessman he's in the the front end of the train for a very long time um but then when he comes out and he says we used to allison mister i'm scared take me home my mom is waiting for me my address is in busan and then the dad tells him he's like you've been bit you're infected and then he looks down at his hands it's almost like he, he didn't even know he didn't know he was infected so i i like that part how he had that bit of like he made it all the way through the end of this whole adventure. Finally, at the end, he's just like, Mr. Help Me. He finally was that, you know, sad sack man who had give, who was about to give up and, like, accept defeat. But he'd already been bitten, so he was already dying. I just liked having that little bit of humanity in him. And so it did make me, like, his character, he had that going for him and yeah. in the end when he died. I mean, I was so glad to see him go um, because I feel like this is the kind of movie where everybody – is going to die. I almost thought that the, the mom and the little girl were going to die at the end too. I was well, actually shocked yeah. that they didn't. I was ready um, for it. I was ready for everybody just to die. It was yeah. so like having these last few stragglers and having him like realize that at the end, I thought that was really well done. I think it's also interesting because like he's not only like sort of giving up, he's also leaning into being a part of the group. Mm -hmm. He's like hell at the last me. minute and it's too late. He like, doesn't know it's the last minute. Yeah. That's what's really, that's what makes it sad. Hmm. Mm. Um, I do also, like, I find the baby flashbacks very cheesy, but I also wish that they had filmed that bite a little bit better because the fight choreography is pretty good, but when he bites him, it doesn't seem real. Like, it, it just doesn't seem realistic to me, I sure. guess. Like, when his hand you, is in the guy's mouth. Yeah, why would you put your hand in his mouth? Like, it's, yeah. How is this more dire than any other second of the last, like, four hours? Yeah. My question, though, too, because when the dad and the mom, the dad and the pregnant mom and then the little girl are on the back end of the train, and then they were on there for a while with the businessman in the front end, 
they were in there for a so he would have been on that train a while as well and when he comes out he's his eyes aren't blue yet he's not infected so i'm thinking wait a minute it took a really long time for him to show signs whereas some of the other zombies got bit and instantly they were like you know twerking and tweaking and becoming twerking. a zombie like immediate, <laughs> immediate transformation so i feel like there was some sort of like inconsistency with and then when the dad gets bit on the hand too he has time to talk to his daughter and the pregnant yeah. lady and then he has time to have a daydream and then to mentally decide to jump off before he's fully trained. It seems like those two men at the end got a longer little extra bit before they became a zombie versus some of the other, like the baseball dudes and like the girl and other people that happened in the, in the, yeah. in the train. I, the whole film. I agree with you. I didn't want to like be too nitpicky about things like that in this movie, but I, but I did kind of get bogged down by some of that watching this, like that there were, the rules didn't, they weren't consistent. Mm -hmm. Which, and I the, mean, it didn't bother me. No, it didn't. I just it didn't. noticed it at the end. Yeah, totally. Well, um, when we're survival prepping, we need to know exactly yeah. how like, long. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. So if you're having an emotional moment, you get an extra, like, five minutes before yep. you become a zombie. Or if you're I the first girl care. on the train. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that, that's the right attitude, I think, Christopher. <laughs> Don't be cynical. <laughs> I do love how, oh, I love how they keep the tension right up until the end when the pregnant mom and the girl are walking towards the end of the tunnel and you're like, wow, did they just survive all of this just to get shot in the fucking face in the last 10 seconds? Oh, I, I'm not going to lie. I wanted it to happen. <laughs> See, I, I would have, I was like, this would be the such a brave choice to kill these characters. <laughs> and, and so... Yeah. For some, so when we watched The Descent, mm -hmm. I kind of voted for the, what, the, the worst American ending? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Where she makes it out and then she gets in her truck and drives away. I think in this one, I think I would have had them shot. Really? I think so. Wow. Because <laughs> I think <laughs> I, I, I totally agree <laughs> with you. I think that's, I mean, I like to be surprised, but I think. To me, that's kind of the normal arc of a zombie movie. Uh -huh. You fight and you fight and you mm -hmm. fight and you kind of barely scrape and you survive and you get through it and then mm -hmm. a human kills you. And then you're yeah. betrayed by your government. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Who betrayed you in the first place? Exactly. Who got you here? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like the I last mean, of us. I, I like the ending just fine because mm -hmm. it was all well acted and well done. But I, I, I think if it were me and as the director or the screenwriter, I would have changed it Aww. like right when she sings the first notes <laughs> <laughs> before she sings when they i actually thought i thought they were going to die at the moment before mm -hmm. they, she starts singing and they realize once they get the call like oh kill him anyway even though we can't identify i thought they were just going to die and mm -hmm. so when they didn't they're like oh no it's it's it looks let's go get them survivors i'm like what oh they didn't kill him and then i was like okay fine and then you have the little girl just like sobbing and singing She's such an but amazing actor. I would have accepted. It would have been more effective to have them killed because that's the whole movie. It would have made so much sense for them to die also. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have minded that at all. I expected that and I was surprised that it didn't. But then once I knew they were going to survive and I'm like, okay, of course it's like a little girl and like a pregnant woman who are like the last two. But they're, then I'm like, well, where are they going to go? Their yeah. life is going to suck. Where are they going to go? They're yeah. going to have the yeah. worst. They're going to survive and hang out with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then she's singing this song for her dad I'm like oh she got to finish the song and like yeah. the lyrics kind of go with her a little oh my like, oh my god honey pie this is yeah. another part where the English dub really oh, suffered no? holy <laughs> shit the singing in that part uh, it's almost worth playing for Man, you guys I'm because so it is. sad you had this experience oh I'm not because it's funny now knowing <laughs> that it's like oh yeah this is just something that somebody might might watch not realizing they have another option. Um, but yeah, the singing part. Because it's like, it's voiced by like a 23 year old white woman. Oh no. So it's, it, but like doing kid voice. Oh, was she oh, sobbing? Dude. This is like a little seven year old who is sobbing. Oh, I, yes. And it is like, it's like, it's like embarrassing how much of a caricature it is. Can you sing it right now, Matt? So, I could pull it up. Oa. I don't know. Remember the, the, the and the lyrics are all in English in it, so it's like even more like this sucks. It just oh yeah, it's. I, it's, I think we need a double feature: Phantasm Two <gasps> and Train to Busan. 
uh, dubbed. <laughs> Did anybody watch our like ADL copy of the DVD? No. Because there's a Phantasm ad <gasps> at the beginning. For Busan? Yeah, at the beginning of uh, the Train to Busan DVD that we oh, have here. It's, what? I think I did see really? this. There's a Phantasm like 40th anniversary oh. I did. Oh. This is what I commercial. watched. Right. That's awesome. And huh. honestly, Christopher, I can see why you were fucking scared by that commercial. <laughs> because before I knew what it was, I was like, yeah. holy shit, what so is when this? The, the arms under the bed? Yeah, imagine a little boy oh, in sure. a scary dark farmhouse. Yeah. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't even like farmhouses, to be honest. They freak <laughs> <take> me out. <laughs> that was um, when Jordan and I were buying our place. That was like one of my hard rules. It was like, if I have any inkling or feeling that this is fucking haunted, we, even if it's like the perfect place for us, we cannot do it. Sorry, yeah. dude. You've seen too many movies. Yes. Just go in there with your equipment and set it all up. <laughs> First thing I'm doing is going right to the basement because that's uh, the scariest part of a house to me. Sure. Do you have equipment to, to, to tell this stuff? <laughs> uh, it's like I I have all the orphanage equipment. I like set right, that's what I mean. Out. You have a series of <laughs> yeah. CRT monitors and Like the and crew from Culture Guys just sets up. <laughs> yeah. I think that should be a new Secret Lab program. <laughs> Ghost, ghost hunting? Did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have done some sort of ghost hunter programs where people have paranormal. There is a, an, a local group who's come in. Yes. Yeah, I'm fascinated by all of that. Oh, man. I'm fascinated by the belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My house is not haunted. I don't think mine My is current either. home is. My childhood home. I've never lived in a haunted home. I don't think anybody's house is haunted. Yeah. I don't think so either, but I've had, like, weird recurring nightmares of my parents' basement, which is a mm -hmm. totally normal-looking finished basement now. But, yeah, like, 30 years old, I'll still have, like, some weird dream where it's, like... The unfur like unfinished version from my childhood, and there's something in there. It is a funny thing that every like there is a weird little fear that a lot of kids have too of basements. I don't know why basements are so scary. I think it's like underground. There's I no guess. way out. Yeah. To get out. Do you guys remember? This was in '86. So remember I was Allison. A, I was. A, <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's I was six. <laughs> <laughs> I was a freshman at college. At MSU, and this guy had gone home for, like, Christmas break or something, and he had a dream about the, the giant freezer in the basement, and his mother had gone missing, <gasps> and it had a lock on it. Do you guys wonder where she is? <laughs> she, swear to God, and I've looked at... She was this, in Reno. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah. It's like, that's horrific. How did she get in there? Oh, the dad killed her and put her in always. there. And put Classic. A, it's always yeah. just and husband yeah. or boyfriend. And put or a lot dude stuff. on the yeah. freezer. I've watched too much Dateline to be fooled. <laughs> I bet yeah. It's like to have a dream about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then pry it open. Mm -hmm. That's she's like actually a in there? Real, yeah, that's a real life horror movie. 40 mm -hmm. years from now, they'll be releasing him from the mental institution. Uh -huh. Yeah. Jesus. Mm. Yeah. So that might count as a little haunted. <laughs> <laughs> the would the freezer want to pass? Would the deep freezer be haunted in that yeah, case, oh. or would the whole basement be haunted? Oh I guess the it, whole thing. I don't think yeah. she was. <sighs> I don't think he put her in first. It's not haunted, but it's still a, would be technically be claimed a spooky house that somebody might not want to buy because that's where the chopped up body was found. Yeah. You have to have a, a sign on the front like a historic home saying yeah. it's a spooky <laughs> home. It's on a list. Seriously, Centennial people don't, tend home. to not want to buy houses where people have been murdered in. I forget I think, what states, but there's like actual yeah, protocol it's a thing. for like if there yeah. was like a homicide or something in the property. Yeah. Mm. Like yeah. a crime or like a, it's different than if somebody dies of natural causes. Right. But that, that person, happens all the time. But though, and those people still could, <laughs> their spirits are still wandering the house. Um, do we have any closing thoughts? I feel like we've kind of touched on everything here. Yeah, I think I'm really glad that I was forced to watch this movie for this. Because, again, it's been on my list. I've heard really good things about it. So I'm happy to have watched it, even though it was a zombie movie. It's actually really pretty. It's really well done. The cinematography, the editing. I like how bright this movie yeah. is. Yes. I think... Something that happens really early on in the movie that I should have mentioned when we were talking about it, but it doesn't really matter, um, is when they're locking the doors on the train at the very beginning, like before we have a full grasp on what's going on, there's something really bright, shiny, sterile, 
nice looking about the train. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's there's this quality to the whole thing that just it, I like that it is a, it takes place almost entirely in daylight, but it still is tense. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of things about this movie that I really liked. It does suffer from a lot of the zombie movie stuff that bores me a little bit. And of course, I watched it like the dumbest way you possibly could <laughs> the first time. So that like I, I and I'm trying to not hold that against it because again, when I watched a few days ago in Korean, it was like this is a different movie. I feel differently about all of these characters, except for the the business guy. He was clearly just like a a shit the whole time, um, and some of that um, is my own like built-in prejudice against someone who's just like, well, clearly this is a rich person who just it doesn't give a shit about any of these people. Mm-hmm. I think this movie says has a lot of interesting statements on like class warfare stuff. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't really considered that like, yeah, when the chips are down and, and the situation is dire and when everybody kind of grasps that, oh shit, no matter where we go, we're all, we're all fucked. Mm-hmm. Um, the choices that all of them made i don't know what my i don't know what my natural instinct would be in the in a situation like that i don't know if i would turn into Mm -hmm. like a i don't care about anybody or if i would panic and get killed in a dumb way or something (laughs) i i just don't know um i think the other thing about this movie that i kept thinking about um was i had to look up if this or snowpiercer came first because uh, I hadn't seen a movie. I've only seen a few movies that take place entirely on a train like this, and Snowpiercer was one of them, and I love Snowpiercer. Um, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's called Junior Hall? yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it is right up your alley. You'll love it. Oh, man. Uh, um, I The only reason I haven't seen it is because isn't Chris Evans or someone like the on the cover? Go with it. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> it, I, I understand that instinct, but Snowpiercer is terrific, and I think... And it's not, it's not fair to compare the two movies, other than the fact that they take place on a train and there's some class stuff going on. I, because that movie's so good and it's so burned in my brain, I it's it's hard for me to not compare them a little bit. And um, Snow Piercer was first, yes, three years earlier. Yep, and it's great. I don't, I can't speak to the series that was made. All that to say that that didn't make me like this movie any less, and it was I haven't seen a zombie movie in recent memory other than this that I liked. Mm-hmm. So, so that is a a, a big plus for it, I wow. would say. Mm-hmm. So when I started watching this, I immediately started thinking of Return of the Living Dead. I think because there are a bunch of different characters, it's another chemical spill. The world starts closing in, and things are getting more and more dire. But, of course, this has a lot more action and way better production, I think. Plus, it's just a more, much more interesting idea. You, you're, you're stuck on a train. How are you going to make that story interesting? Mm-hmm. And I think they do a great job making this an interesting story. Just trying to move up the train and back. It's like every car is different. They've got a different challenge. Different things happen. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was really cool. It's really, it's very good pacing. Yeah, there was always mm-hmm. something. It was very intense, very fast paced. And then even after they get off the train and they're running around the train yard, I was really nervous then too. Did you see that they're remaking this? Yes, although I think it might be in production hell now. That's probably good. Yeah. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's an American production uh-huh. in New York. It seems like it's a bad idea. To One, try to do this. We don't have high speed rail. <laughs> yep. But two, during the Korean War, Busan was one of only two cities in South Korea that wasn't captured by the North Koreans in the first couple of months. So it was like a ref like a refugee city. Yeah. It's culturally significant that mm-hmm. they are going to Busan. Mm. New York doesn't have that. Like yeah. it's not the same. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We have an individualistic society. That's not gonna play the same. Yeah. I, I hope yeah, that never comes out. I was just going to say <laughs> that never. Well, apparently Gary Dauberman was writing it, and he's involved with like the Conjuring stuff. Oh no! Oh, yeah, no. and he wrote one this or two. Thing he wrote one or right two now. of the Stephen King <laughs> It new adaptations. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's one oh. of those writer dudes. I don't know. I just don't. I but I think you're right, Austin. I think I might just go to poop. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's. I just don't. I don't see a reason to remake this. It does everything that it needs to do. And better than any American filmmaker could do with yeah. it. I also think, too, that watching movies with an apocalypse theme that are caused by something, like, it just makes me, after, like, 
with COVID the, since the past four years, it, I have more, and I'm not alone in this. There's more of like a sensitivity to like, oh shit, could this really, is this really going to happen? You know what I mean? Like it just, we have more insight to like how to handle a global pandemic than we did in watching the movie Outbreak in the 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, where like, oh, that's never going to happen in real life. It, it's kind of, it gives, a, it makes, it's a little scary, mm-hmm. you know? I'm seeing that it's in post production. Sorry, I had really? to find I had to find oh, out if it was something no. was happened with Last it. Train in Yorkers in post. Yeah. What's it called? It's train called to- the last last train to New York. Oh my god. Yeah. From where? Newark? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 From Philadelphia. <laughs> it's actually just the Hoboken train. James, going James Wan Jersey, is a producer. Yeah. Uh this is not good news. <laughs> no. The last train to New York. Um, I do have some recommendations if you liked this movie. Please. Um, one, if you would like to watch another South Korean zombie thing, I highly recommend the TV show Kingdom, which is streaming on Netflix. It is amazing. It's like very, it, it's like Game of Thrones if it didn't totally shit the bed at the end. It's all about like, um, like political intrigue um but there's a zombie break outbreak but it takes place in like the 1700s or something it's like the joseon dynasty or something anyway watch it just for the hats because the hats are amazing (laughs) 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 and then there's also um hashtag alive which is also on netflix which is um a zombie movie where a um, this guy is home alone in his apartment and the zombie apocalypse happens while his family is out. So he's trapped in his apartment while everything else is going on around him and him trying mm. to like live. Um, and then other Korean horror movies that I love are um, The Wailing, which is a classic. I feel like a lot of people know about that. Um, it's like shamanism and um, not in exorcism but like it's a possession movie um i also recommend gonjiam haunted asylum which is like a found footage sort of deal these like five paranormal investigators go or maybe there's more six they go to a haunted asylum and guess what happens they die it's nothing good (laughs) (laughs) and then um the last movie i wanted to recommend is bedeviled it is somewhat hard to find i don't remember what it's streaming on the devil. It's 2010. Ah, it's on the Roku channel for some reason. Anyway, um, highly <laughs> where, recommend. Where content goes to die. <laughs> yeah, basically that and Tubi. Although yep. I do like, anyway, uh, Bedeviled. It's about this lady who goes back to this like super remote island that she grew up on. And I cannot tell you any more than that, but I will tell you I've never been more angry watching a film ever in my life. Ooh. Like fucking boiling. So. Hmm. intrigue and if you would like more recommendations please email us at what scares us at adl.org i've got a lot guys <laughs> i watch a lot of this bag, stuff. y'all <laughs> this is my thing so speaking of recommendations and other movies i don't i i'm curious have you seen the supposed like sequel to this peninsula <sighs> yeah so i've seen soul station which is animated and came out the same year as this but it's like in the same universe i mm-hmm. don't recommend it okay peninsula is fucking terrible i'm Bummer. sad to say yeah it's not good i i don't maybe you'll feel differently but i don't even recommend it i don't think it's worth a single watch and then are you aware of, or have you seen Plane to Busan? <laughs> what? No, I am not aware of this. From 2022? Oh, no. Where its top review is someone saying, is this not copyright infringement? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I'm not like a snakes on a plane kind of girl either, so no, I don't, I don't know anything <laughs> <You're not>. about <laughs> this. <laughs> Final Destination? <laughs> I saw that in theaters. I saw snakes on a plane in theaters. Get these. Yeah, interesting. Did you like it? No, oh, it's terrible, okay. <laughs> but um, but I feel like that was understood. I'm trying to remember now what the Samuel L. Jackson, the, the edited for TV version of the get the motherfucking snakes off the motherfucking <laughs> plane. It's like, oh, it's we got to get these monkey fighting snakes off to, <laughs> off of this Monday to Friday play, <laughs> which is very good. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a new movie title, Monday to Friday Plane. <laughs> <laughs> Monday to Friday Plane. It's going to take place in South Korea. 
and it's just a plane that that has standard routes on Monday to Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to rate this thing? Mm-hmm. I enjoyed this film. I'm glad I had a reason to watch it, and it was actually really good. Love the cinematography, the editing, so many things I've said throughout the past hour of why I've enjoyed the film. Um, I don't really have any big beefs against it. I'm not gonna. I don't think I have any big gripes with it. I'll give it a seven out of ten as an overall rating. Really solid film. Really well done. Um, one of my favorites of Alice, that Allison's picked for us so far. <laughs> surprise, Putting, surprise. Making me read some <laughs> subtitles on a screen, which um, I'm <laughs> glad to get out of my comfort zone and do that. So I'll give it a 7 out of 10. And then for the scarometer, I was trying to think of this, and I don't view this as necessarily scary, but it was very suspenseful. Mm-hmm. It was very suspenseful, sort of like a... I don't even know what else we watched that was suspenseful, but it just it had that buildup of like the anticipation and your heart's beating, and you're sweaty because you don't know what's going to happen next, um, which I guess in theory is a scary thing. It's not just these zombies that are the scary aspect of it, because um, inevitably the humans are the scary are scarier than the monsters in these kinds of movies. But um, I guess I'll go with like a one and a half on the scarometer. Yeah, it sounds about right. Just for the intensity, not for like the gore. Also, special effects were pretty good in this. I guess yeah. they airbrushed all the veins on these zombies individually. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of freaking zombies in this. Like a lot of them. Um, the, I think the special effects were really cool. Yeah. Um, so I, I will give some props to that too. But yeah, I'll go one and a half on my scarometer. Nice. Yeah, so there I am. Well, I thought this is a great movie and I'm going to give it an eight rating. I think the action is fantastic. It's sad. It's got all these fantastic characters. It's filmed so well. Uh, held my inner, held my interest through the mm-hmm. whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was really, really well done. I loved it. For the scarometer, I'm gonna give it a one. I don't think this movie is really scary. It's more of a thriller. Mm-hmm. It's like watching a James Bond movie or a Hitchcock movie. I think. Um, so yeah. Uh, but that's not to take anything away from it. So if I were to rate this movie based on the English dub, <laughs> <laughs> which is originally what I was doing. One star. <laughs> I would have given it a five. And uh, but, but we're not doing that today. Uh, I'm going to give this a seven out of ten. Wow, um, okay. I like this movie. Zombie movies are pretty low on my list in terms of like horror genre horror trope stuff but this one's cool this one i think the biggest thing about this movie that i liked is the aesthetic it looks great Mm -hmm. um and it it plays a lot with tone there are a lot of kind of goofy moments a lot of silly moments and then there's these melancholy things the sad stuff didn't really make me sad but again i watched it in english and so that (laughs) stuff was not sad uh because of poor delivery but, but i like that it's i like that it wasn't all grim the entire time and that it wasn't all yeah it wasn't all one thing it was mm-hmm. it i i liked some of the the shots that it took the movie also didn't really scare me at all i think the idea of a zombie apocalypse is scary i don't know if it's hard to say if i would if i think the train part almost made it less scary to me especially once they figured out like oh if they can't see us then whatever it's not a big deal um it's very it's very grim, but it's not scary. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say one, um, just because I don't know the idea of a horde of like all fucked up zombies coming up the escalator at me would be scary, but um, but overall it's not a particularly scary movie. Um, trapped yeah. in a train car with a selfish businessman, <laughs> terrifying. I, five, that happens five, scary. <laughs> all the time. I'm constantly surrounded by selfish old white guys. <laughs> And I'm no longer scared of them. I just, I just detest them. You've been desensitized. Uh, yes, exactly. But yeah, yeah, good pick. Good movie. Thank you. Cool. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 because this is my thing. And I picked this movie. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will also give it a 1 out of 5. Although after seeing that I gave Phantasm a 2, it made me think, like, is this a 2? But I don't find this movie scary at mm-hmm. all. Uh, if this was an anxiety scale, this would be a totally different situation. But, um, yeah, 1 out of 5. Not scary, but, um, dang, am I stressed out every single time I watch this thing? Yeah. It's find. suspenseful. That thriller, man. It's interesting watching the fine line of a thriller or a horror or a thriller 
dash horror, which this is. <laughs> And this one takes breaks, though. That's I think that's one thing that I can. Another thing I can appreciate this is that there are these like little moments of sweetness with people, and there are these little moments, which initially I thought was weird that like the action would just stop for a minute, so you could learn a little bit more about the people. But it made their deaths more meaningful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of heart in this. Yeah, a and there's a lot heart. of people to kill off, so it's 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 good that they spend some of that time <laughs> with each of them. Well, if you liked what you heard today and want to let us know, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thanks for joining us. This has been What Scares Us. What Scares Us.